Hi, I'm Matt here in Michigan. And I'm Randall here in Texas. Today, Matt and I are bringing you a new movie review of The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. This movie stars Patrick Wilson, Vera Farmiga, Rory O'Connor, Sarah Catherine Hook, and Eugene Bondurant. It is directed by Michael Chavs, who also directed The Curse of La Llorona and The Maiden. But before we get into the review, make sure that if you like this video, give us likes. Those likes really help us out. If you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and ring that bell icon. Now, according to this movie, it's based on a true story. A young man accused of murder claims he was under the control of a demon when he killed the victim. Paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren tried to get to the truth of what happened and help prevent the suspect from getting the death penalty. Now, this is the third movie in the Conjuring series and the eighth in the Conjuring universe. It has a $39 million budget and has been released in theaters and for streaming for a limited time on HBO Max. It has received mixed reviews from critics, but currently has high scores from audiences. Now, Randall, you recently said The Conjuring is like your favorite modern day horror film. So what do you think of The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It? For a mainstream entry in The Conjuring series and not one part of the extended universe, pretty pretty big letdown. I think The Conjuring 2 is okay, but this one, which is basically The Conjuring 3, was just not scary to me. That's its biggest detriment, is I want to see a horror movie with ghosts or demons or whatever going on. And I walked into this not really expecting a whole bunch and still being let down by the lack of actual scares I got out of it. Now, Matt, you're well known for not being a huge horror <laughs> film fan. So you go into this. What do you think of it? Well, this is only my second Conjuring film that I've actually seen. I didn't see The Conjuring 2. And when we watched The Conjuring review that, that was the first time I'd seen The Conjuring. So I thought this movie started off pretty well. You, the scares, at least for me at the beginning, were kind of scary, even though I don't know quite as scary as the first Conjuring film. And, you know, I did already liked the characters, you know, Ed and Lorraine. And I kind of liked our new characters that we got here with, like, Debbie and Arnie in this to start off. But, you know what, this movie, in my opinion, tried to do too much. There was, like, so much going on to this film that I got completely taken out of it later on. And like you said, too... Part of the stuff that happens in this movie took, like, the scares away from me. Like, I, after a while, stopped really caring what was going on, and it took away all the tension for me. I definitely do still like the characters of Ed and Lorraine, although there are parts where Lorraine is basically like Deanna Troy in, in TNG, where she's super hypersensitive when she needs to be in this particular story, but then completely worthless at another time where you're like, shouldn't she be picking up on something? <laughs> you know, like, oh, man, what what happened here? So there's not a lot of balance there. But the portrayal from, you know, Patrick and Vera is just so genuine and so good that you can kind of look past that. I love the characters. I, I liked the add-in character, Arnie. I think he did a good job of this. And the rest of the cast is kind of just, it's well-rounded enough. But definitely, you come watch these movies for these two characters, and that was not the problem for me. The problem was that the story is just not scary. Yeah, I definitely did like Ed and Lorraine throughout the whole thing. And I will say too, like Arnie and Debbie, I, I liked them at the beginning. But as the movie went on, I just didn't really care about them too much. <laughs> and there's so much stuff that happens in this movie. Like one of the things I said when we watched our original Conjuring thing, like if I was like nitpicking, I didn't like some of the things of like people just like flying through the air and stuff or for different reasons, whether they're possessed or there's a ghost or whatever's going on we get a lot of that in this film too and granted some of it like i don't want to get into spoilers or anything but it might not actually be happening might be happening might not actually be happening but sometimes it is and it just kind of took me out of the film that's part of what took me out i'm just kind of like you know what i don't really care what's happening right now with these supposedly scary parts of the film or what at least what's supposed to be scary parts of the film it's such a shame that the scary parts don't always hit because the story and the idea is scary if you sit back and you think about like what's happening without giving away spoilers if that was happening in real life that's really really scary to think of 
But on screen and portrayed the way it is in this film, that story, which is a, a basically a very interesting, good idea, just isn't paying off for the audience. And, you know, when you're making a movie, that's kind of the point. Yeah, I thought, too, this movie set up some elements that were going to be, like, real important. Like, hey, we got to find this out or we got to find this out kind of thing. And I don't think the movie really fulfilled some of those promises that they made early on. And then we get some other, I don't know, I would almost call them side stuff, even though they do play into the main part of the story. It's almost like, you know, Ed and Lorraine go off and they're like solving another mystery. And man, you know, it, it's such a pretty quick conclusion or whatever to it. Oh, to me, it's just kind of like a side part in this movie just kept getting bigger and bigger as it went on. Instead of really focusing center, I think if we just did more focus on like our, our Debbie and Arnie and stuff and then our Ed Lorraine and just had those two. I think we really could have developed this movie, you know, made it, you know, simpler. Sometimes simpler is better. I think for me, if this movie was a little bit simpler, I probably would have enjoyed it a little bit more. I'll get into one, one, um, not necessarily spoiler, but like just kind of weird thing I noticed in the movie. Maybe you did too. It's not important to the storyline at all, but where did the parents go? <laughs> I mean, they, they're they there at the beginning and it makes sense. And then it's just like, what, wait, where, where are the parents throughout the rest of this film? No budget for them, I guess. I think they were only important about one certain element. And when that certain element wasn't really a factor anymore, they just kind of like go off. Like they care about one character, but this other character, they probably just don't care about too much. But it's funny. Yeah. I saw this movie with, uh, with Zach, one of our friends, and he said the exact same thing after the movie. He's like, dude, what happened to the parents in this movie? They're not important anymore. We had this really big, awesome family unit cast in the original Conjuring, but in this one, it's just like, nope, Ed and Lorraine. <laughs> yep. And real me, you could probably talk more about how it really connects with the other Conjuring films, but for me, just comparing like this one to the other Conjuring one, like, this, to me, it doesn't really hold a candle to that first one. Like, yes, Ed and Lorraine are still really good characters and stuff like that, but I think the first Conjuring movie was just more developed. We care more about all the characters in that film. A lot of times you want to just analyze movies on their own, but this is part of a series, and this, to me, the third installment of this trilogy or so far, and heck, I haven't seen any of the other films in the eight movies or whatever, but yeah, to me, this is just a lesser film. Yeah, most of the extended universe isn't that good. I stick mostly to the Conjuring like mainline films, and I've watched some of the Annabelle stuff, but it it's it's not the point, honestly. Like this Conjuring universe isn't interwoven, you know, woven like the the MCU intricately. I guess you would say it's more haphazard for sure. <laughs> so I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about that, honestly. Like oh, I haven't seen any of those. This one won't make any sense. Yeah, don't worry about that. Well, I was just going to say, Ed and Lorraine, they sure got a lot of items in their basement, so we're sure to probably get more of these films. Yeah, now we're into the 80s, Matt. <laughs> I do want to say one thing. I almost thought about doing, like, a Cars and Movies in this, but, like, there, there's some interesting cars, but then I was like, no, they don't deserve it because, <laughs> because the way they do it is so bad. <laughs> there's, like, a 68 Camaro SS in this, and when it drives down the road, it's like so obviously CGI. I'm like, nope, just just no. And then as it as it's driving down the road, they have the sound effect, you know, the car like zoom going down the road. And I just I'm just sitting there with uh, with my wife watching this and said, that's not what cars sounded like back then. Yeah, I was kind of wondering if we were going to do cars and movies when I saw one or two cars in this. I'm kind of like, wow, they're not really on screen for all that much time at all, too. And you don't really get a good look at any of them. Yeah, no, definitely. And and the way they use them is just so disappointing. Got to go fast. Get in the Camaro. <laughs> Honestly, I think that's what it was, is that our character that was driving it just had to be someplace fast. We're like, all right, let's try to put in this, you know, fast car or whatever so that they can get to this place fast. Got to go fast. See, <laughs> see our Sonic review. <laughs> <laughs> in conclusion, I definitely was disappointed by this film. I wanted more scares. It's not that scary. I liked the story. I still like the characters. But it just doesn't quite hit home for me. Yeah, for me, I'm not big into spoopy movies. And at the beginning of this, I actually did have some moments where my 
where I kind of like stopped my like, breath or whatever. My heart kind of stopped for a little bit. So I had that tension. But later on in the film, it just had none of those elements for me in this. And it's pretty sad when you kind of like look at your watch during movies. It's like, all right, how much longer do we have in this film kind of thing? So sadly, that's how I feel about this. But Randall and I, we want to know what you guys think about The Conjuring. The Devil Made Me Do It. Let us know in the comments below. Also, be sure to go to our YouTube page to check out some of our other movie reviews. We have new movie reviews, flashback movie reviews, TV shows. We also have deeper dive discussions. Make sure to check us out on Facebook if you haven't already. We always post the day before what we're going to be posting on YouTube next. We also post new videos every Monday and Thursday, so be sure to come back and check those out. For now, I'm Randall here in Texas. See everyone next time. And I'm Matt here in Michigan. Have a good day, everyone. Next time on No Market Media. Please consider checking out some of our other videos.